Today, the beginning of a global journey. A six-week odyssey spanning six countries on three different continents. The world's greatest skaters all looking for a golden patch of ice as they compete in the ISU Grand Prix of figure skating. Michelle Kwan, the three-time world champion, is again the universally recognized favorite. Her only blemish last season, a loss in the Grand Prix final to Russia's Arena Slutskaya. This year, Kwan and Slutskaya will again go head-to-head -to, -head to decide the Grand Prix title. Today, Michelle skates for a record fifth Ladies Skate America Championship. She faces a youth movement that is hungry for a share of her spotlight, including Sarah Hughes, the 15-year-old New Yorker, with a mental toughness that carried her to a top five finish at the World Championships. And Victoria Volchkova, the graceful, long-limbed Russian who needs only a boost of confidence to realize her enormous potential. And finally, a comeback in the world of ice dance. Canadian Shailene Bourne and Victor Kratz have returned and are taking dead aim at the fiery world silver medalists from Italy, Barbara Fuserpoli and Maurizio Morgaglio. It's a bitter rivalry renewed at ABC Sports Skate America International next. The initial event in the ISU Grand Prix of figure skating. ABC Sports Skate America International brings us to the base of Pikes Peak, Colorado Springs, where figure skating is as much a part of the landscape here as the Red Rocks and the Snow-Capped Mountains, a city that's hosted five world championships. And we welcome you inside the World Arena for the official start of the figure skating season and the beginning of the Grand Prix. And here is how the series works. There are six competitions over the next six weeks all around the world. Skaters can compete in up to three of those, but two count in the standings. And at the end of the series, the top six qualify for the Grand Prix Final in Tokyo. We're getting set for the free dance. Here are the standings after the original dance. The reigning world silver medalist from Italy, Fuserpoli and Morgaglio in the lead over Jobiasco and Vanegas of Lithuania. Then the Canadians, Shailen Bourne, Victor Kratz, ahead of Chait and Sagnowski of Israel. And then the American champions, Lang and Chernyshev, currently in fifth place. Representing the United States, Naomi Lang and Peter Chernyshev. Terry Gannon and Susie Wynn, the two-time U.S. ice dancing champion, ringside. A little bit later when the ladies take the ice, Dick Button and Peggy Fleming will join us. But here are the two-time and reigning U.S. champions, Naomi Lang and Peter Chernyshev. They are currently in fifth place. She's the wind, and he represents a storm. They really have superior lifting quality and choreography this year. They've made a big coaching change this year, and, it's, and I, I get a sense of freedom with their skating. Over the past year, they have moved from Detroit to Hackensack, New Jersey, and now are coached by Sasha Zulin, the 93 World Ice Dancing Champion. They finished eighth at the World Championships last year, the highest finish of any North American team. 
but there is still a feeling, Susie, that they are not given their due by the judges, that they are undermarked at least in terms of those in the Americanized dancing community. Well, I agree. Their compulsories are so strong, and that's something we don't see here, but they get undermarked constantly in the compulsories, where I think they should be first. So they're always at a disadvantage when they come into the free dance. The judges say they want to see more of an aggressive quality, more expression and confidence, but it's hard to feel confident when you're always undermarked. Mm. from Michigan, Peter Chernyshev, originally from St. Petersburg, Russia. And his citizenship should arrive in time for the 2002 Olympics in Salt Lake City. good is how close together they skate when they're in face-to-face -face positions. They both have such a sound technical base. As you can see how secure they both are. That makes them truly great skaters. In practice, they skated a lot stronger, so I can see a little bit of the fatigue entering in and, and some of the sloppiness in the turns that they're doing. Should be interesting to see how all the teams react to that altitude problem. <laughs> skater coming into Colorado Springs a little bit uneasy about how the season will start as you may imagine new programs and an entirely new effort this year and you gotta be confident now after the start that they've had they were in third after the compulsories in fifth heading into the free dance and great reception from this crowd it's great to see I think this type of reception is really going to give them the confidence they're not going to get the confidence from the judging Naomi Lang and Peter Chernyshev the US champions Naomi Lang One thing that this team is so good at is their lifting ability, their strength. Here you can see a beautiful line, a nice rotational lift, nice fast exit out of the lift. That's difficult to do. And then they extend right into their twizzle sequence. Twizzles are just nice one foot turns. And here the change of edge lift. Watch here how he lifts off of one foot in a hydroblading position. He's got tremendous balance and she's very secure in her body line. There's a look at the panel of judges, which has been the same, by the way, through the compulsories, original dance, now the free dance, and the placements have moved around. It's been a volatile weekend for them so far. That's a good way of describing it, Terry. What the judges say they're looking for, the required elements, that is the lifts, the spins, and the footwork sequences, unison in the leg and body line, speed into and out of the elements. They're also looking for closeness and difficulty in the footwork and in the choreography. For technical merit. So now the marks, Lang and Chernyshev. The first set will be for technical merit as you look at Alexander Zhulin, who's a new daddy, by the way. Susie, congratulations. <laughs> new mommy. 5.0 to 5.4. Well, look at Canada has, uh, they're protecting a little bit there, 5.0. That's unfortunate. Born and Crack still to come today. Presentation 5.3, 5.7, a wide range. And this is what I'm talking about. The judges are holding back. They're skating early in the program. It's a shame that these marks aren't a little bit higher. 
And hi again, everybody. We are thrilled to have you with us as we get the official start of the figure skating season underway. We're with you again next weekend from Colorado Springs, next Sunday, in fact, for the pairs and the men. Later on today, don't forget, it's Michelle Kwan, the three-time world champion going after a record fifth ladies title here at Skate America. Right now, though, our focus is on ice dance, and we welcome back in Susie Wynn. And Susie, you look at the field, not only here, but throughout ice dance now, without the Russian dominance, the very deep field, and here skating in Colorado Springs, the world silver medalist from Italy, Barbara Fuserpoli, Mauricio Magaglio, and they've been terrific. They really have. They're such a strong, fun, and fiery team to watch. Not only did they take the silver medal at World Championships this, last year, but they also took the gold medal here at Skate America, and that's not good enough for Barbara Fuserpoli. She told us at World this year we're in second place, but next year, <laughs> watch out, number one. <laughs> yeah, she was very adamant about saying that. The Lithuanians, who were the world bronze medalists, Drobiasko and Vanagas, also had a terrific season. They are here. And the pride of Canada, Shailen born Victor Kratz. And it's a comeback for them this season because of Shailen's knee injury, which kept them out much of last season. Through the original dance, it's been very interesting to watch how those two teams have been judged. Well, it's great to see the, the Canadians back in the mix. They haven't skated since January. But... Look here, in the straight line footwork, a required element, Victor has a stumble. Very hard to recover in this required element. Not only did they have a stumble, but Draviasco and Vonnegas also had a hard time in the same required element, the straight line footwork. Right here on the stop, she catches an edge, down she goes. Yet, they might have fallen, but they moved up a couple places. Always interesting to watch the judging in ice dance, isn't Always. it? Well, Always. coming up, the team that is shooting for number one in the world this season. They were very close last year. Barbara Fuserpoli and Maurizio Morgaglio are up next. Is the reigning world silver medalist, but they are not satisfied. They're back and they're stronger than ever. They may not be recognized on the streets of their hometown of Milan, but Barva Fuserpoli and Maurizio Margaglio are determined to put Italy on the map in figure skating. Last year, they finally made their mark in ice dance earning the top spot on the podium at Skate America. That victory gave us a lot of confidence on ourselves. The new season has brought new change. Barbara was married over the summer to her longtime love, Diego Catani. They were outside the church with a 6-0, and it was fun. They also adopted a new training method by using masks to simulate the high altitude in Colorado Springs. It's hard, but it's, I think it's a good way for, for to be ready. Armed with a powerful new free dance, Barbara and Maurizio aim for gold once again. Would you please welcome now, representing Italy, Barbara Fusarpoli and Maurizio Gamagaglio. Well, they are well on their way to defending their Skate America crown, and it was the win here last year that started the season off so well. And it's really a surprise season. The first ever medal for an Italian ice dance team at the World Championships. It was a silver medal. They want number one this year. Barbara Fuserpoli and Maurizio Margaglio. Their music is from the motion picture Romeo and Juliet. charged up the ladder in the world of ice dance, but they've passed a few teams that really wasn't expected at the time. Born in Kratz, who will skate in just a moment, the four-time bronze medalist. They defeated them in every phase of the competition at the Cup of Russia last year, and afterwards, Victor Kratz said, the Italians, that's a team with no potential. There's no love loss between these two teams. Well, Victor and Shailen are very natural skaters. Barbara and Mauricio are very hard-working, and they make up for any lack of natural ability.
one thing that makes this team kind of fiery is just they don't hold back at all. Their approach is very strong, very confident. Now this is when they take a little bit of liberty with the whole Romeo and Juliet theme. This is a motorcycle crash and now they are angels in heaven. This is the 96 movie version, remember. I wonder what Shakespeare would think of yeah. this. A dance spin, one of the required spins. I spoke to Maurizio earlier. He said they're about two weeks behind in their training because of Barbara's wedding and taking some time off a, off of a very rigorous schedule last year, but very determined to get back on their training schedule later on. Nice intertwined low hydroblading move and lift. slowing down a little bit, Terry. The altitude has really affected all of the teams during practice. This is the first time we're seeing this in its entirety all week. Even though Barbara and Maurizio have spent about 10 days in Colorado Springs training, and you saw a moment ago wearing those masks to simulate the high altitude, but it certainly has affected a number of skaters throughout the practices and early rounds of competition. This program might be harder for them than last year's program. Last year, they didn't seem to have a problem with the altitude. And a stumble there in their footwork, their diagonal footwork. The fatigue is setting in. It's so strange when you're training in altitude, you really can't feel your legs. They just become like rocks. And the harder you try, the worse it gets. This year, this program is not nearly as successful as last year's program. It's gonna take a little bit more work to get them together. I do respect the fact that they're trying to reach out on a limb, but it, it just, doesn't work for me right now. Two wins last season in the Grand Prix series. They made it to the Grand Prix final where they finished second. <laughs> and you can see oh boy. they are out of breath right now. Barbara Fusserpoli and Maurizio Margaglio of Italy. They started off very strong in the opening of their program, opening up with a nice rotational lift in a very nice split position. They covered the ice well, and they worked very well together as a team. But toward the end of the program, they started to struggle with fatigue. You can just see in their upper bodies, they're getting a little hunchy. It's hard to, to really appreciate their body movement there. Again, not over the skate. So easy to falter when you're tired like that. and for technical merit. Now they came into the free dance with a comfortable lead in first place after the original dance. We'll see what the judges think here. The first set for technical merit, Susie. These are some nice marks. I think that they're not good when they're comfortable. They don't fight as hard. Now for presentation, 5.7 up to 5.9. In fact, two 5.9s. From Italy and Lithuania. Interesting. So still in first place for Sirpoli and Margaglio. When we come back, it's their rivals, Shailene Bourne and Victor Kratz, the four-time world bronze medalist who have not competed in almost nine months because of Shailene's knee injury. The Canadian champions skate next. Don't forget, the ladies take the ice a little bit later. Michelle Kwan is in the building, warming up. She will debut a new program a little bit later today here on ABC. Here to represent Canada, a warm welcome, please, for Shailen Bourne and Victor Kratz. The free dance continues, and so does what has become a bitter rivalry. Taking the ice, Shailen Bourne and Victor Kratz, certainly rivals with Fusarpoli and Morgallo. The Canadians in third place after the original dance. This is their first competition since January. <laughs> Music 
music was chosen by their coach and choreographer Tatiana Tarasova, and the music is March With Me. See how pumped Shaylin Bourne especially was coming back off the knee injury, not able to compete at the Canadian National Championships nor the World Championships last season and losing their place. It will be difficult with the Lithuanians and with the Italians to get back up there, but it looks at least like they're on their way. Shaylin Bourne and Victor Kratz of Canada. Welcome back. <laughs> They just skated with a renewed passion, beautiful body lines, great control here in the change of direction lift. What's great is they're exploring new choreography. They're coming out of their comfort zone and it looks great.
One thing that they've really popularized is hydroblading, a low level movement, but here they do a little roll reversal. He's leaning on her. Great control, great balance. Good stuff. So now Shaylin and Victor await the thoughts of the judges. And really, I hate to keep beating the point into the ground, but the altitude, it didn't seem to affect them. They were very good up until the end, Susie. I agree with you, Terry. Now for technical merit, 5.3 up to 5.5. Listen to the boos and the hisses from this crowd. The choreography was very complicated. They, they skated it strong from, really, from top to, to bottom of the program. One of their coaches, by the way, Nikolai Morozov. Tatiana Tarasova, also one of their coaches, and she helps out with Fusarpoli and Morgalio. Now for presentation, 5.5 to 5.7. Well, these are solid marks, but they're, they're going to really be very competitive with the Italians. It'll and, be a great year. And it puts them in second place right behind the Italian team. Taking the ice next, Galit Chait and Sergei Soknovsky. Galit, born in Israel, but grew up in America. First skated at Rockefeller Center, Sergei from the Soviet Union. They'll take the ice after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Just the word legendary often, but it applies in this case. Torval and Dean. Jane and Christopher, and Christopher now a well-known choreographer, very successful. Recently, he took to the ice with our own Susie Wynn to demonstrate one of the intricate ice moves of ice dance. A key component in ice dancing is the choreography. Creativity is of the essence. And Jane Torval and Christopher Dean were the first skaters to make Olympic history by receiving perfect scores across the board for their presentation. They made choreography an art form. Chris, thanks for joining me. Now, how does one go about choreographing now that you're a full-time choreographer? It's one of the hardest things, um, trying to be creative, trying to be original, trying to make it look like it's been done for the first time. Maybe a way of demonstrating it for the viewers is a couple of lifts, an easy lift and then maybe a more creative lift. So, are you ready? Ready. Let's, Let's go. go. Here comes the easy one. Simple in, simple out. Okay. Setting up the creative one. Coming in. Rotation. Through, land, up, back edge, off we come, turn, and thank you. Thank you. It's the first time I've done that lift. We're very creative. Ditto. <laughs> Competing next, representing Israel. Would you please welcome... Back now as the free Johnny dance continues, and, and right now it is Fuser, Poli, and Mergalio in the lead over Born and Crafts of Canada, and then Lang and Chernyshev. Trying to move up from fifth place after the original dance. Right now, they're in third. And here is the team representing Israel. Galit Chait and Sergei Soknovsky. They finished fifth at the World Championships last season. And that was a huge jump. They were 13th in 1999. They are in fourth place after the original dance. The music variations on a theme of Paganini, arranged by Andrew Lloyd Webber. In this piece, he is representing the brilliant Italian violinist Paganini, and she is his inspiration and muse. That is, both hands are holding on. This couple is fast and furious. They really, again, are very aggressive, very expressive in their choreography. They don't hold back. Very similar to the Italians. 
what they did at the European Championships last year was the real first shock of the season where they jumped from 10th to 6th and it foreshadowed what would happen at the Worlds when they moved up to 5th place. fact that they're very experimental a lot of the things that they're doing you haven't really seen before and that's what great choreography is about it's, it's about experimenting trying new things not being afraid of that elite shape born in israel but came to the u.s as an infant sergey originally from moscow he left russia Found his way to Israel, searching for a partner, did not find one, eventually came to the U.S. and found Gilly. And they have been together since 1995. They have dual citizenship in the U.S. and Israel for Gilly, and Sergei in Israel and Russia. The toughest part may have been getting up from that hold at the end with her head upside down. What a move they made last season, and is very happy about the way things have gone here in Colorado Springs. Galit Chait, Sergei Saknovsky representing Israel, trying to move up from fourth place after the original dance. Well, every time I've seen them, they really give it everything that they have. Just a lot of energy. In their diagonal footwork, you'll see a lot of turns. Their feet are nice and neat. Some nice twizzle action. Those are turns on one foot. They, they, they alternate between skating very close together and then creating separations. Here in a twizzle sequence, looking for unison, they could probably finish off their toe point in the turns. And here's their change of edge lift. Nice stretch she shows. Great strength and body alignment. Here he's in a spread eagle position and changes edge after the completion of that right there. They skated very well. It's unfortunate they have designated this competition as a non-scoring event in the Grand Prix. Remember, you can skate in up to three of the six events, but you choose two that count in the standings. We'll see them at Skate Canada and Cup of Russia. Those two will count. Technical merit marks, 5.1 to 5.6. So their choreography is very complicated, very interesting, and, and these 5.5s five are nice marks. And now the set for presentation, 5.4 up to 5.7, Susie. Those are nice marks again. They should be very pleased with everything about this week. So right now they're in third behind Bourne and Kratz. When we come back, they're coming off a breakout season. The Lithuanians, Drobiasko and Vanagas skate next. Barbara Fuser Poli, Maurizio Margaglio, the reigning world silver medalist in the lead over Born and Kratz of Canada. 
and Shade and Saknovsky of Israel. The Americans land in championship right now in fourth as the final team takes the ice with a chance to win here. Margarita Drobiasko, Hovilas Vanagas of Lithuania, the reigning world bronze medalist. They finish right behind the Italians at Worlds in Nice. free dance is composed of tango. Now tango is a very exhausting, passionate dance, so it should be interesting to see if they can keep everything nice and clean and strong and staccato. continuing that new era. They do most of their own choreography. They do a nice job. Strong rotational lift. thing about four minutes of a tango is that the tango creates such a tension and the movements often are staccato using a lot of toe steps you get very tired out anyway and keep in mind their fall in the original dance late in the program maybe due to fatigue and this much longer here They're really capable of a lot of difficulty. They should feel pleased, the, you know, the first time out of the gate this season. But it lacks a little bit of the passion of last year's program. But with time, I think this could be a strong program. It would be tough to actually win this event with the lead going into the free dance that Barbara Fusarpoli and Mauricio Morgallo enjoyed. They are backstage, smiles on their faces. And Mauricio, as usual, animated for the camera. He always turns it on for the camera. But 
they were so far ahead. Who knows, though, because Drobiasco and Vanagos were in fourth. The original dance, they have a fall, and they move up to second. So you never know. You never know. They, too, have very strong lifting ability here in their rotational lift. The hard thing about rotational lifts is, boy, that once that momentum gets going, it's hard to control and stop. But they have a nice exit and very clean choreography, very tango. And in their change of edge lift, very beautiful line here, nice stretch. She could stretch a little bit more through her neck. But this is at the end of their program. They, they did hang on pretty well. So now they wait, and actually when you crunch the numbers, they're pleased with their performance. You crunch the numbers and someone else had to have beaten the Italians in the free dance in order for Drobiasco and Vanagas to actually win this event. But here are the marks coming for technical merit, 5.4 to 5.6. A very complicated free dance. I say these marks are fair. And now the marks for presentation, 5.5 to 5.9. Look at one of the placements from the French judge all the way down to fourth place. And it's hard to get a great idea when there's fatigue setting in. These, will be, these programs will be a lot of fun to see in a couple of weeks. So Barbara Fuster Poli and Maurizio Margaglio of Italy start the season off the same way they did last year with a win at Skate America. And it was a terrific season a year ago. They won at Cup of Russia as well. They went on to finish second at Europeans, then second in the world, the only team that stood in their way last year and this year, and a scene in Pesarab. So Barbara Fuster Poli, Maurizio Margaglio repeat as Skate America champions. They pick up 12 Grand Prix points. Drobiasco and Vanagas, this is their non-scoring competition. Born and Kratz pick up seven for third. The Americans, Lang and Chernichev, four points for fifth place. And Beata Hondra, Charles Sinek finish in sixth and pick up three points. Right now, let's join Susie Wynn. Thanks, Terry. I'm backstage with the defending champions of Skate America, Barbara Fuster Poli and Maurizio Margaglio. How did you feel about your first first competition of the season? It was good. Um, I feel good. I think it's Colorado Springs because we're lucky here. Uh, we did good job for first competition. Uh, I'm, I'm happy. Absolutely. Now, how did you feel about the altitude, Maurizio? Did it affect you in any way? Yeah, of course we can feel it, but uh, we were skating hard before in Milano. Then we came here two weeks before a competition just to make more sure about our programs. I think it was a great idea and we scared our best. Well, congratulations and good luck for the rest of the series. Thank you. Take care. Thank Bye. You. Ciao. <laughs> go on, go on, leave me breathless. When we come back, Michelle Kwan leads the way. The three-time world champ unveils her new competitive program and 15-year-old Sarah Hughes is right behind her in second place. The ladies are next.